Good morning, Kansas City. Buenos dias. Thank you for tuning in to our first virtual Dia de los Muertos celebration in partnership with One Kansas City Radio and the Maddie Rose Art Center. This year, uh, we did not have our seventh annual Day of the Dead Festival like we do in, at the Chester Park, which is next to us. Normally, we have a live band and puppets and food trucks and activities. And every year, we commission uh, Jessica Manco to do face painting. This year, uh, we are only doing a altar viewing. We had two nights, and this will be the last night. This year, we asked individuals to make a, an advanced reservation to keep a safe distance and follow all CDC protocols. My name is Paul Gutierrez, Director of Programs and Events, and it's my honor and pleasure to introduce you to my friend and colleague, Jessica Manco. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm, not, I'm great. Thank you for Good. having me. Of course. You want to give the audience a quick bio before you start your Dia de los Muertos uh, face painting demo? Of course. I'm Jessica Manco, and um, welcome to my house. And um, I am a, a can originally from Kansas City, artist and educator. And uh, every year, I'm happy to participate uh, with uh, the Dia de los Muertos um, celebrations with Maddie Rhodes, uh, Nelson Ark Atkins Museum, and Kansas City Museum. And uh, this year's a little bit different, so I'm going to show you uh, how we do a traditional sugar stool sugar skull uh, face painting. Um, you can use any colors. Um, I like to use the um, Snazaroo uh, face paints or uh, global face paints that you can get at uh, theater, any theater supply uh, company or online. And I always have a variety of brushes uh, available um, to use as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. Sure, I'll let the audience know. If you have any questions for Jessica, please drop them on the comment box and I will uh, shoot them to her. So um, enjoy the demo. Go ahead, Jessica. All right. <laughs> so I just uh, get the uh, face paint cake um, wet with water and a paintbrush. And I'm gonna start applying uh, the base of the face. And this is all water-based. Um, so it's easy to remove. You can have a, with just water, or I like using, um, you know, face wipes here and it dries fairly quickly so um, once it's dry you can apply uh, whatever decoration you want to put on I like to put um, flowers and line decorations I've experimented with many different colors today I'm going to use traditional flowers a lot of flowers that I uh, brought in from my garden. And I'm gonna bring it all the way down. To the neck. If you want the white to get darker, you can apply, apply more than one coat. And I would avoid having like any lip gloss or uh, makeup on underneath because sometimes that can interfere with your design. And I just leave the eyes open. So I'm going to go back over that with the design. As well as the nose area. I think it's, you can go over your eyebrows, but I like to use that as 
like kind of this is where your um, eye socket is. So I kind of follow my eye socket. And then I'm just making sure it looks even, no choppiness. Let it drop a little bit. And I'm going to start using some smaller detail brushes. Uh, to start uh, outlining the skull. A couple of helpful temps, uh, tips that you can use is you just use your the skull that you have underneath as a guideline for where you're going to draw your cheekbone. So you're just going to follow your cheekbone down and right about here, which is like uh, where your pupil is, uh, that's where the outside of your, of your uh, upper jaw will lie. And then your lower jaw uh, will put right, right underneath. Um, and I'll show you how to do uh, the teeth afterwards. We're just gonna put the, establish the first basic lines. For teeth, I like to use a very, very thin detail brush. And like I said, um, you can use any color that you like, you don't have to use black and white. I'm just gonna use black and white today, but um, I've done uh, many different colors, blues, reds. Um, sometimes it just, depending on what your outfit's gonna be. We're going to start doing the eye. And I'm going to do a, a, a fade on the inside and out. too much water.
And I usually say, recommend like look up and that'll help you open up your eye. I'm just following that brow line. Yeah. And I like using a brush that has a flat edge. So it'll help me get the edges there. There we go. Hey, Jessica. Yes. We have a question from the audience. What okay. are you using for makeup? I am using the Snazaroo water-based face paints and also global face paints. They're all water-based and you can purchase them online or find them at any theater supply store. Um, you can also use uh, theater makeup or uh, but this is the, I think I, I found the best it's, uh, because it's water-based, it's easy to apply. It dries fairly quickly so you can layer your colors and it's easy to remove. You can also get blending cakes so you can get like a variety of like monochromatic colors. Um, I, I, they also have, um, different applicators. Instead of the cakes, if you want to do uh, do for line work, they also have them available in pen form as well. But you could certainly use any makeup. This is just the best uh, for when we're doing festivals with when we have those large lines. <laughs> So now I'm going to start uh, carving into my skull. I'm going to go all the way up to the hairline. And like I said, it, it, once it once it dries, it's it's completely dry. So I'm just following my jawline. Thank you. 
and I'm just putting two even lines down for the neck. And I use the flat edge of that as well to start making And I'm just going to use the brush to kind of soften and blend. So I'm doing some shading. And I can always go back if I accidentally go over a little bit and touch up that bone. And I'm doing finishing up my neck. Put a little bit of highlight. And you could add, you know, butterflies or hearts. If you wanted to add something special to your design. And then again, we're going to bring my cheekbone in. And then it's, it's going to curve around and then right where your pupil is, that's where it's going to turn in for your jawline on both sides. Um, another helpful thing too, is to line up your brush for the teeth. So you're just going to draw a line straight out on either side. Make sure you have a nice detailed brush. And I want to stop right where my pupil is. So the white is completely dry, so the black goes right on top of it. And it's I like using the white first. And then my lower jaw.
you can fill this in solid black or you could you could do a color So again, I'm going to follow my cheekbone, kind of see where it lines up there. And then again, do my lower. For larger areas, use a larger brush. And I made accidentally made that, so I'm just gonna correct that quickly. It's hard working sometimes. And reflection, this is not the best lighting. There we go. Get my color. And then I like to I like to touch up the edges. And I'm just kind of outlining the bone, the vertebrae. I'm just going to make sure everything's, yeah. So for the teeth, um, I like to make sure that I'm using a thin brush and I always start with the middle first. Um, there we go. So I got my detail brush. If you need to stabilize your hand, you can hold your hand or use your pinky to touch the mirror. Um, and I just go straight up and down. Let me see.
a little trick too to help it. You're not if you have trouble with lines, just give yourself a little kiss. Hey, Jessica. Uh huh. It's looking awesome. Uh, question How long have you been doing uh, Day of the Dead face painting? Oh my gosh. Uh, for over, I'd say, 22 years. Awesome. And it was, <laughs> we do, uh, I, uh, during the festivals, uh, sometimes we'll do more detailed pieces like this. Um, but we also have, I, I put some examples up on my uh, Instagram page that shows, like, kind of quick. Um, examples that we would do um, in the festivals. And you can just leave the line straight, or if you want to draw the teeth, you're just gonna make a, uh, like a uh, U shape on the bottom, or we call it like a happy face, or on top of sad face. <laughs> I kind of just use light strokes up. And go back with a clean brush, and I can make some quick corrections. And I'm going to start doing 
the uh, marigolds. I'm gonna do a design on my chin and the top. I like to layer yellow first and the flower is going to be open on the bottom. Hey, Jessica. Uh-huh. Question, do you by chance know if different regions have different uh, techniques on a uh, face painting for Dia de los Muertos, depending on where, what region you yeah. are? Yeah, yeah, there's all there's um, many different styles. As I said before, you can do, uh, I'm just doing black and white, but you can see different colors. Uh, there's different different symbolism in the meanings, uh, the tra traditional symbols, the, the flowers, um, uh, the butterflies. Um, I'm just doing a, a, a general demo of the skull structure and uh, traditional flowers that you would see for the celebration. Great, great, thank you. And I'm also going to put a flower on the top. So I, I like to layer the yellow first. I'm going to do a marigold. And then I'll do some decorative work on the side. And marigolds are uh, they have small petal, uh, uh, petals in the middle and they kind of radiate out. It smells wonderful here. So I did the outline of that marigold and now I'm doing the darker lines. Hey, Jessica. Mm -hmm. You have another question. It says, yeah. you mentioned doing this for over 20 years. What keeps you motivated or excites you to continue, continue um, every year? Well, my, my, my love for this started uh, through traveling with my family and, uh, and living in Mexico and working at Maddie Rhodes, uh, uh, Maddie Rhodes, uh, started these events over 20 years ago, the, the festivals and the, uh, exhibition, uh, right now they have it, it's, it's all virtual, but you can, in the gallery, they'll have, uh, different ofrendas on display. And so, um, I only do it do this during the celebration. I, I would never do this. Uh, I, I'm, an, I'm an artist and I have my, this has nothing to do with my art. This is just for the celebration. So I would never do this on a, on a regular day. But um, I also loved uh, makeup and, and film. Uh, one of my minors in college was in film, mainly sci-fi, low budget sci-fi and horror movies. So I had some background doing makeup, but that's kind of how it evolved. Uh, for me. Great, thank you. So I outlined the petals. And it's, it's a beautiful celebration. So um, I look forward to uh, every year because it's a time where we come together as 
a community, it's friends and family, and we celebrate life, celebrate people that we love. So I've got the, the petal outlined on my chin. I'm gonna do the same thing on top. I'm just doing the inside of the marigold. Marigolds are the traditional flower that they they use to line and decorate the ofrendas. Um, and the significance of this flower, which I find beautiful, is that um, after the flowers are uh, dead, they retain the color. So similar to our soul, when we pass away, our memory stays alive through the celebration. Just wanted to darken it a little bit in the middle. I'm gonna do petals.
And so put the, the dark green on top. My foot's falling asleep. Jessica, we have just a comment for you. It says, thank you for explaining the meaning of the marigold. Gold sure. Anytime. The There's so much video. to it. I know I just wanted to, to give some explanation for what the significance is. There's lots of traditional flowers. I have some on display here. I'll show you here in a minute. Coxcomb, hollyhocks, baby's breath. Um, I plant these every year in my, in my yard so that uh, it is ready. So when I build my ofrendas at home, We said, how many minutes do we have left? Okay. Are we still good for more? Yes, we're good. We're good to go. Uh, we still have about fifteen minutes. It's okay, good. Five. And so I like to put color around the teeth. Um, the the skull represents um, it is supposed to represent all of us. It, it's what unites us because we all have the skeleton underneath. And it's notice there's never any blood. Um, the it's the, the teeth represent smiling happiness. Um, the sugar skull is supposed to remind you, uh, uh, you know, because this is sad. Uh, you know, it, you, you're, when you're sad of, of losing that loved one, uh, the sugar skull is to remind you of the sweetness in life, the good times you shared with that person. So you can eat them or you just keep them as representation to remind you to, of the good times that you shared. So I, I like using the colorful, the color outlines on the teeth uh, that, you, that are common in the, uh, that they decorate the uh, paper mache skulls with. as a reminder to smile, as a reminder of all our loved ones. Hey, Jessica, you answered this question already, but I'll ask it again. How long have you been face painting and how long does a session take? It just depends on how much detail you want. Um, like I would sometimes spend, uh, I can do a face quickly in like 15, 20 minutes, but not as much detail. Um, or I can even do more than this and go for a couple of hours. Just, it just depends on, uh, what I'm trying to do. Um, but I've been doing this for over 20 years. I wouldn't say just with doing sugar schools, but art in general, I guess, since I was born, my mother was an artist and, uh, always been involved in the arts since I was, since I can remember. And naturally just enjoy teaching. My high school teacher noticed that when I was in high school. And so she, I took uh, her position uh, when she retired at Paseo Academy. But I've, I've taught all over the city when I uh, uh, lived in, after I went to school in New York, I taught in the uh, St. George's Academy, Brooklyn Friends, in Brooklyn, which is a Quaker school that focuses on the arts. I taught in Mexico when I lived there too, draw, life drawing, painting, uh, 
private tutor. But I, I just, it's just something I've always been been uh, doing since I can remember that I've loved. And happy to share. Good teachers, I think, always share ideas, lessons. And I'm always ready to learn too. There's always something new I can learn. Um, so we're gonna do a, a detail around the eye. I had, can you use Q-tips if you don't have anything, if you don't have anything fancy, I haven't been out, so. We also, you can get a you know, craft store, different sponges, sponge tips. Um, but I like, I'm gonna put the sponge tip down into the paint. And I'm gonna try and keep it for the blend, yellow on one side, orange on the other side. And I just use that. To get the petals. Oops, <laughs> accidentally did the opposite side, but that's all right. Hey Jessica, question. Mm -hmm. If people wanna find resources, where do you, what would you recommend either um, your Instagram page or any other? Uh, my Instagram page and uh, you can also private message me your email address and I'd be happy to share. Uh, I, I have a whole unit. Uh, if you need um, presentations for your classroom, if you need um, reference pictures and stuff, I mean, I, I look at real flowers, but you can also uh, find lots of templates online. Anything you need, just tell me and I'd be happy to help you. Great, thank you. Every year for the celebrations, we always do, um, you know, different activities depending on what the project is. So one year we all did, you know, trees of life. Uh, one year we, we decorated sugar skulls that were a paper mache from Oaxaca. One year we built a large ofrenda at the Nelson. Um, I've built a couple of ofrendas at Maddie Rhodes, but uh, I haven't in a long time. The first time I did, I made a lot, my father was diabetic, so I made a large giant uh, coffin out of sugar. It looked like a giant piece of candy. <laughs> And I'll show you in a minute uh, the altar I built here. And you can take detail brushes too, after you get that basic form. And you can also bump that pedal up. Every time I do a sugar skull, 
it's different. Like I had no idea what I was doing today. I just decided what colors I wanted to use. Um, and I'm feeling very festive and I want, I thought about doing something with a rainbow. And now I'm just outlining that edge. So I got that frame going. So it really helps highlight that flower. Do the same thing on this side. Just some final touches with the flower because I like to put some brighter colors. And now I'm doing, I'm going to do some decorative line. I always have paper towels on hand. <laughs> hey, Jessica. Mm -hmm. This would be mindful of your time too. We have about five minutes before 11 o'clock. All right, I'm almost done. All right, final stages. This is just a, a, a headband with flowers on it. Take it off.
Yeah. This is my final look. I'm trying to get. <laughs> I don't know if Tom. Ah. My apologies. Hold it back for me. And then my final, final look. I think I got it down a little bit lower. I like that, yeah. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions too, I'd be happy to answer. Jessica, that looks amazing. And just knowing that you, just within an hour you created this illusion of Katrina, which is the name of the of what mm -hmm. you just created. Um, just getting good feedback, gorgeous, gorgeous, very talented. Thank you for your time. Um, but yeah, thank, thank you, Jessica, for allowing uh, us to go into your home. Uh, thank you, audience, for allowing us to go into your home to kind of give you this brief uh, demo of, of face painting for Day of the Dead. I'll welcome you back next Wednesday. We'll have another virtual Dia de los Muertos presentation with uh, Director of the Arts Culture, Denny Mendez from the Mediworth Art Center. We'll be interviewing three families of how they're building their altars over at the Art Gallery. Tonight is our last viewing of the altar here at the Kennedy Museum. We are at capacity just to keep it safe distance um, for tonight. But people are welcome to walk by on Waldron Avenue, which is the street facing the parkland. And you can walk by and still smell and hear the sounds of our altar. Until we meet again in person, please stay safe and be well. And just a reminder, please wear these as you're out in public so we can get over this um, pandemic that we're in. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you. I'll post pictures on my uh, Instagram and share them with you too. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.